Hey folks, welcome to e-commerce 360. Today we have Sandra Parker, founder of world's first period proof activewear. Hey Sandra, welcome to Ecom 360. Hi, so nice to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So Sandra, uh, let us in a little bit about how you incepted this idea. How did you land upon this idea when nobody was thinking about it, when it was still an icky subject, when it's still a taboo for women yeah. in, even in the form of athletes to talk about, uh, you know, periods or periods activewear. So how did you um, land on this idea? So first, a uh, little bit about me. I spent my whole career in the fashion industry. So mm -hmm. more than 25 years in the corporate world with jobs relating to fashion from uh, designing to marketing to merchandising to management PR so mm -hmm. I had my hands in pretty much all of it I had a job that I loved for 18 years when COVID happened and then everybody was home and so I just started thinking I had the the entrepreneur itch and I had seen so many people go through with ideas that they had I taught marketing I saw students grow and De develop ideas and I don't have any daughters I have a son but I have six nieces so in conversations that we had together they were telling me about period shaming mm -hmm. and just uh, the stigma surrounding periods and so I started doing some research like when we all had time we were home and I discovered period underwear and there were some big players that already were dominating that space and I found that the styles were very uh you know, uh, kind of so somber, black, uh, mm -hmm. like you want to hide yourself. Yeah. There was nothing bright. There was nothing colored. There was no big mm -hmm. waistbands. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. It was like, because you have your period, you're going to hide. Yeah. You don't want to be cute. You want to yeah. be, you want to feel like you're on your period. Yeah. So then I, I told myself, I'm going to design something that, girls will look forward to their period. That became my tagline, look forward to your period. So I began working at it. And about two years later, my first, uh, which is in March this year, my first collection was into my store, justinehaint.com, which was mm -hmm. period underwear with matching bras. But if we go back when I was first fitting the samples on the mannequins, at one point I was fitting a pair of shorts on the mannequin that had uh on the model, I should say, not the mannequin, um, that had pockets on the side. And she tells me if these didn't have the seams, like the underwear seams, I would wear them to the gym. Hmm. So I had a flash and I thought, well, well, I'll make they didn't have the seams, like the underwear seams, I would wear them to the gym. Hmm. So I had a flash and I thought, well, well, I'll make them without the seams. Hmm. I'll line them. And so I, I began prototyping. And again, I did research into athletic period wear, and I found some companies were having some leggings, like black leggings, again, black, black shorts, uh, everything in black, bathing suits in black, N nothing colorful, nothing printed, nothing fashionable. And then I started thinking about yoga, and this space is no one has done a yoga suit with yeah. period protection in it. So I designed that yoga suit. I did seven rounds of samples, uh, wow. We have tested it upside down. The one you see behind me is one of those prototypes. And so now I'm ready to come up with the first full collection of fashionable period active wear. And I can truly say that it, this does not exist, like fashionable clothing that is for athletic wear that has, is period proof uh, does not exist like that. So it's really, uh, that's, that's how I was born. It was an overnight, but it was like, this was the process. It's great. I, I checked out your website. Uh, the designs are fantastic. And like you mentioned, Thank almost you. all period wears are just plain black. Or it's something yes. very boring. Pe people just yes. want to hide. It's just that, you know, it just because um, you know, you you you're on your days off doesn't mean that you have to be any less fashionable, right? Or you don't have to show That's the right. point that you know you're on your day off. You don't have to show it that way either. And as you mentioned, it is also important for women to be active on those days. And somehow the kind of um, dresses that were available um, are somehow not encouraging them to be active. 
you know they just encouraging exactly. them to exactly Um, slouch in the couch, all that. Um, but um, it's great that you came up with the idea. Were there any challenges as far as um, funding is concerned, as far as marketing? Um, because it's one thing to have an idea; it's another thing to execute the idea and get it to the customers, or you know, get it to your audience. So, what was your journey like? Yes. Yeah, so I, I hope anyone interested in developing their own line will listen very carefully. I'll mm-hmm. tell you my process, and I hope that it can help uh, other entrepreneurs out there. So, when you're you want to launch a brand and you want to do production overseas, you have to give your trust to a manufacturer. And uh, for me, being in that field of like being in the fashion field, and I did study in fashion like many mm-hmm. years ago, but I still remember the process. The process is long, and you have to do homework. So for me. there were certain certifications that i wanted the manufacturer to have so when you go on a website for example like alibaba is probably the biggest one no matter what you want to produce mm. and you do let's say period underwear like a specific product about 200 if not more manufacturers will come up and so then you have to start to add a certain constraint like certain certifications for me were important and then from there like i then you look at reviews and then you look at like you you cut it down and cut it down cut it down i chose 12 and during covid i actually did zooms like with all of them i would like log on at 2 in the morning sometimes and just call on camera without mm-hmm. letting them know just so i could see inside and so from those i chose three my entire uh, first collection i had it made by the three of them and i used my savings to do that so oh. someone wanted to start a line you may say you know i found one the price is good the reviews are good i'm going to go ahead and produce right away no don't do it so i invested in three of them and mm-hmm. the three of them the price was low medium and high mm-hmm. so it was hard for me to imagine that the the smallest one and the biggest one the price was twice so i was like how are they giving me prices that are so different so i went ahead and, and as you could see from my line i have print so you have to print on on a mm-hmm. lycra kind of fabric and you have to print the waistband and you have to like the certain stitching the details and let me tell you the difference was so great between the three of them which one do you think i took from the three small medium or large price the highest priced one i'm assuming that has the best quality <laughs> yes yes the highest price was the highest quality but also the best service mm. she was always there no matter what time she replied we would zoom without appointment so i saw the manufacturer like there was nothing on the floor it was very mm-hmm. clean and one day i just popped into the manufacturer like uh, on a zoom and i mm. saw they were sewing a brand that is a brand that Uh, like a an, an international brand that I know and that mm-hmm. I wear and that I trust in undergarments and so that gave me a lot of reassurance that if they have this contract then I could see the labels their songs so mm-hmm. all of this made me and I even like they even showed me their paychecks of the employees oh so that like and they didn't have to show me this to get my small little contract of my, me just starting mm-hmm. out so with all of this in hand I went and produced and uh i we did quality control like halfway through I, i like the whole process for me was really 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 Very great tough. yeah i i i, I mean the the Is shipment it- took longer because it, oh i'm so sorry the shipment took a bit longer because it was like everything was backed up from covid so they would stay at a port let's say in vancouver so mm-hmm. it took maybe a month more than i thought um but that's because of covid like everyone's shipments were late some were mm-hmm. stuck overseas for months and months so overall i got my products uh in my hands i checked every single one and it was really just like i expected uh anyone that orders things for me uh the the quality they see on the pictures is exactly what they get so that explains so i hope if there's one person out there that is watching this and you go on alibaba and you want to get you know a sweatshirt made and you see someone is doing it for a dollar 50 and you say oh that's a great idea i'm going to get a 100 right now 
Mm. You don't know what you're getting until you get it in your hands and you see it. Order one of each. Order it's going to cost you sample cost. Sometimes it's a hundred dollars for one U.S. Mm. But mm. it's worth it because you have to touch it. And you have to feel it. So, Absolutely. yeah. So uh, this is like the manufacturing and the shipping part of it. Yes. What happened on the other end of you know your website, your marketing? What what was happening? Was it like you know parallelly you did both, or did you have a team who managed the marketing side of things for you? How did you go about yeah. that? Yeah. So so my strength is actually marketing. That's that's mm -hmm. where like my strength strength comes in. So everything to do with marketing with the website. I, what I didn't know, I learned. So, um, you know, I'm a solopreneur. I mm -hmm. fir at first, when I first started, I hired a graphic artist to do some stuff for me, and I would I kept adding changes. Like, can you change the color a bit? Can you change? And then I was like, I might as well learn to do it myself because it's in mm -hmm. my head. Mm -hmm. So I learned to. I use the like Canva is amazing. It's the best tool. So I, with using Canva. And a lot of time and a lot of work, I did everything myself. So from the website to the content and to all the social media platforms, like I think I'm on nine or eight social media mm -hmm. platforms. I'm on every one of them. And uh, and then I uh, I did hire a coach for the, like the marketing, like the paid ads, mm -hmm. because that okay. I didn't know anything about. And I had watched YouTube videos. It's not enough. I, that's a, that's really a, like a special skill. So mm -hmm. I did hire someone to help me with that because that's very difficult. And even with that, um, I think that the hardest today in 20, almost 2024, when this will come out, selling online is not as easy as a lot mm -hmm. of YouTube people will make it seem mm -hmm. that you wake up to orders and it's just magical. I did a TikTok video and it went viral. Uh, yes, you can go viral, but you can also win the lottery. So the marketing aspect that I think that till today is still the biggest, uh, not challenge, but it's def definitely, uh, you know, spending a dollar doesn't mean you make a dollar back. So yeah. sometimes you spend a dollar, you make a dollar. Sometimes you spend a dollar, you make zero. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I advertising, it's still, uh, it's, it, a lot it's of still, it, it, yeah. It's a lot of trial and error. Right now, I have success with doing pop-ups because people, when they see the, the, the garments and they touch it, they buy it. Yeah. So definitely for 2024, I want to look into going more wholesale so that I can be in stores. That's the next step. That's great. So you mentioned somewhere along the conversation about the challenges of being a solopreneur. Um, so what do you think is like the biggest challenge of uh you know, women solopreneurs in e-commerce, is it going to be um, manufacturing or marketing or just managing everything? Um, what is the biggest challenge for women who are just starting out in e-commerce? Uh, I think if you're like me and you have years and years of working for big companies that, you know, you have a lot of reward and satisfaction, for example, like, from your bosses or your clients or your peers, and you know every day you're going into work, you're respected, you're, you could see the fruits of your labor, you have budgets to spend, and they, they, you know, there's, there's value to what you're doing. And then you go from that, like that high every day, then you're sitting in front of a screen mm -hmm. every day and you're just creating content, posting content waiting for people, you know, your stores open, you're waiting for people to come in. And so you don't have that validation. For me, like I have an amazing husband. Actually, I could talk about it a little bit. My husband is Haynes. That's where the name came from. And my son's name is Justin. So I just combined my two loves and I made Justine okay. Haynes. So my husband Haynes, he comes home and he always has something positive when I'm having a bad day or I tell him like, I, I remember I did campaigns. I would say I spent a thousand dollars. I just watched it just go away, mm -hmm. all gone. And I didn't go to the right audience and a thousand dollars, poof, just like that, it's gone. And mm -hmm. he's always positive with me. Uh, so if you don't have that, it's important to find it. If you're a woman, you're an entrepreneur, there are so many organizations. There's the forum. The forum is like my go-to place. Every week you can go there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a not-for-profit women's organization for mm -hmm. women in Canada um, that get together every week. There's a lot of free services. 
Uh, so you need to find a community because working mm -hmm. day in, day out by yourself without that feeling of like you're doing a good job or also sometimes you need to ask for help and you don't know when, like when is the right time to contract things out. Like for me, for the marketing, every now and then I take a contract with a consultant and they go through all my platforms and they tell me you need to, like a doctor, like a, mm -hmm. like a checkup. So Got when it. do you need Got to it. contract it out and when can you do it yourself and also the mm -hmm. validation for yourself? Like sometimes you need a pro to tell you um, you're, you're, you need to stop this avenue. Like you need to, the direction you're going or, you know, you need to spend less on your ads and do more of this, less of that. So uh, definitely if you're alone and entrepreneur, you need like a health check every few weeks, every month or it's important. Not just a business for, health check. Uh, business health check and even your mental health wise, right? If you are part of a community, you feel that you yes. know, everybody is going through the same struggle as you are and it helps you kind of get that sort of validation that I'm not alone in this journey. There are a lot more people and you get to also help others with whatever knowledge or experience that you have gained so far. Um, also, um, also, you uh, let's let's talk about a little bit about packaging. You know how packaging and uh, is also an in, incredibly important part of marketing because the unboxing experience is now like exploding in Insta and a lot of the uh, or in TikTok. So, um, how did you um, come up with uh, the packaging? Is there anything that you would suggest? That well, I'm I'm going to be very honest and transparent. When you when you receive stuff in the mail from me, the the, the poly mailers, they're, they're pink, but they're not branded. Like, I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I cut the cost as much as I can. I'm a new business. So the packaging, I, I, I do have like packages. If for influencers, I'll do like put more, let's say bows and whistles mm -hmm. and ribbons and different things like that. But, um, you know, what I could invest in that is less costly to, to me, but will make the experience precious is little gifts that I put inside. Everyone gets a card written by hand where I, I use their name and I, I talk about the item they bought and I'll say, mm -hmm. I hope you will enjoy it. So they know that it's it's someone that looked at their order, you will enjoy these shorts mm -hmm. and I use their name. So that will enhance the experience without, I'm a new company. If I spend on let's say branded poly mm -hmm. mailers, I'm gonna have to put the cost on you, the customer, right? The consumer. So if you're a new company starting out, yes, it would be great to have every everything sent in the box with tissue paper, but it will quadruple the price. So uh, as a new company, I, I didn't invest in that yet, but, but one uh, of these days, but... Let's like just like you said about cost, right? Great that you brought up that point because I was just going to talk about shipping cost and you know because packaging is also part of shipping. Generally, in any e-commerce business, you group them together: packaging cost and shipping cost because yes. because the weight of the package, the volume of the package is going to determine your shipping cost. So, um, how how did you? um decide on okay this is the amount of cost that i'm going to spend for shipping slash packaging or yes. plus packaging, and this is how much i'm going to have in my inventory um so how do you go about deciding or allocating the budget for um these uh, different functions so for me and like most of the entire planet i'm a amazon prime shopper and i I, my experience really ruined when I put stuff in my basket in the on a fashion brand, let's say, and I get to the cash and there's fifteen dollars for shipping. It ruins my experience, especially if I'm just buying a top, you yeah. know, for thirty dollars and it's so it's half the price is shipping. So yeah. it really ruins my and I leave the basket behind. I do leave it and people will leave it. So I yeah. wanted to have free shipping. I wanted yeah. to have free shipping. It was really important for me to have free shipping. So for example, let's say like the, the smallest item I have on my site is let's say the reusable pads. So mm. I bundled them in groups of three and six so that everything could be in, in a package that's at least $45, $50 retail. I think right now we have sales. So I have stuff that's 35 retail and ca Canadian retail. So my, my shipping cost is like 10 to $15 Canada, US more or less. Mm. So, um, I included that into the price. Mm -hmm.
And most people, it's rare they order just one item. So when they order two, then you split it in two, then it's really much less than that. Mm -hmm. So that was my that was my my shipping strategy. I really wanted to show free shipping on the top, and it's really paid off. And that's a great strategy because people don't want surprises uh, after you know hours and hours of browsing and selecting the one that they want, and then they go to the shipping uh, page and then they find that it's going to be like half the cost or more than 50% of the cost. That's not something that uh, anybody wants. So let's talk about what your customers uh, have been talking about, you know, what their feedback has been about your product. Uh, give, let us in into some of the highlights of uh, the customer experience of your product. Yeah, so um, uh, because it's a period product, it's an intimate uh you, I, I'm getting into their intimate space. Yeah. It's not, you know, I'm not selling white socks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and with all the pop-ups I've done in the last year, I've, I have gotten to speak to hundreds of women and mm -hmm. a lot of them will open up to me, not about fashion. They're opening up to me about their periods, about having a heavy flow, about having PCOS, about having irregular periods, about having, you know, a lot of hemorrhaging. So they talk to me about these personal experience or going through menopause or going through, let's say, having incontinence after, since they've had their baby. They have, you know, sometimes they sneeze and they have accidents. So I really like, they trust me with a most intimate parts of their life. Mm -hmm. And when uh, they receive their package or they place their order, when they go on social media or they send an email saying, I can't wait for my period. I'm like this to me. And I've had it said to me many times. It, it makes me like almost teary if you could see it because this was exactly my mission. This was exactly the point to take an experience. That's a negative one. And now instead of on your calendar, you put X's of these are the dates. You're like, I don't want to do anything. Now that the dates are going to circle, so you can't, you can't wait because you have something positive attached to it. And then soon with the active where you're going to have a chance to be excited for something that you used to dread. And um, so when I started, I didn't have like a lot of entrepreneurs. I didn't have a huge budget for marketing. And so I actually, I got on the computer and I Googled, how do I get free organic traffic? Mm -hmm. So this is what I Googled. And I fell on this video of this guy that was saying, write blogs. So, okay, writing blogs is something I love to do. So I started writing blogs on the topics that are relating to periods. And they say, fill it with SEO. Okay. So I started writing blogs and then uh, answering questions on Quora. So on Quora, because my, my, my product is linked to a topic that is so highly discussed on Quora, which is health, women's health, periods, incontinence, P PCOS. So um, I created my, at first I started answering questions and then I created my own form. And so on Quora, I just like read it. You can't promote, mm. but you can link, uh, if there are articles, you can link them. So since my articles, which are my blogs were linked to my website, I started getting so much traffic because I would answer questions about irregular periods, but oh wait, I have a blog about that topic. You can read more here. So I kept tagging my blog. And so on Quora, as of like a few months ago, I surpassed a million visitors, a million mm -hmm. views. And awesome. so that has been my, my second biggest source of traffic to my website that I've never spent a penny on. The first one is Instagram, but I've invested like thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But on core, I've never spent a penny, just my time. So not only did it get me traffic, but it really gave me an insight of like how women, what they're going through. So I see them every day, like over a million people have visited. So I have so much uh, experience in sharing their personal day-to-day, -day, what they're going through, how they feel about their periods. I mean, it's gold for me as a manufacturer product that can help you. So now I know how you feel. I know how you live your period, friends from all over the world. So really, that's been golden to me, that particular platform. Absolutely. And uh, did you make any changes to your product based on the feedback uh, or the, the kind of uh, responses that you received? Did you go back and say, hey, this is something I could, you know, draw here or I can add to my product? Like, already you're creating this great product, but is there something like, uh, okay, this is the design that probably, you know, is it something like a continuous process where you 
you know, go back and forth between the, your customers and your product design? Uh, definitely. But the comments, they come more from the users of my products. So mm -hmm. when I do pop-ups and they try it on um, and they say, I wish this was a little higher. Or the, so I, I make notes of that. Mm -hmm. I definitely, I'm going to tell you right now that I will have black in my next collection because of the mm -hmm. feedback. So yes, I will have black. I want to be known for my prints. Uh, mm. for the fashionable looks I'll have my logo in pink on the black thing so that's something that came from the feedback I do understand that women love like they love 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 black um, just for me to launch I really wanted to stand out and I wanted to be different because if you wanted black underwear or act active where you can find it from a competitor so I really wanted to stand out but yeah definitely people told me I want black I want black okay fine I'll <laughs> give you black maybe they'll mix and match with the colorful one but uh, yeah. so that was one of them I think it's because mostly we associate black with being safe <laughs> during those days it's just that yes. you know I think anxiety goes away <laughs> when you actually automatically choose yes. black so my, my number one print on my website is white and has mm -hmm. newspaper print on it. And that's the number one print. And it's lined inside in black. And I've never had, like, actually, I guarantee my product. And I, I've never had refunds for leakage. So, uh, but it, it, the women took a chance with it and, and it, it paid off. So they really love the white with the newspaper prints. But yeah, I know they love black too. <laughs> So what's the vision like for 2024, uh, 2025? What, what is like your vision? Do you have a certain milestone that you want to hit, a certain revenue mm -hmm. target you have, uh, or a certain number of team members that you want to include, uh, like new hires you want to add? So what, is it, what does it look like? Do you have like a vision board? Uh, where do you I do. So I, I actually, I want to do my first B2B show. Um, mm -hmm. there's one, I'm in Montreal, so there's one here in Montreal, but I would like to, there's one in Vegas that I want to do in August. So mm -hmm. if I have the budget and I can afford to go, I, I, I'm going to decide that in the next few weeks when I look at my year and my budget. And I want to try to make this happen because it's definitely, a, it's a bigger one where I can have access to international buyers. So I feel like I'm ready for this big one. And, um, because doing a show for anyone interested in manufacturing uh, wholesale, it's not just the cost of your booth, but it's also, you know, fulfillment. And it's also, you know, you have to, um, you have to like dress your booth, for example, like every mannequin you bring to your booth, you have to pay for and all of that. And you have to think of, like I was saying, like fulfillment, how you're going to fulfill the, the orders and what your costing going to be like is uh, doing one show doing your first show and a bad win making like a few mistakes in your first show it could bankrupt you and before you even start but yeah. i really see this product wholesale i see people going to department stores and seeing and display with the hang tags that you can you know take your phone to and see the youtube uh demonstration on how you wear it how you wash it uh i see this because it's so new People, like, believe it or not, they don't know that these products exist yet. It's not mainstream mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of education to do. And because of that, I feel like wholesale going big is the way to go. So this mm -hmm. is where I see the brand going. But I will always have my online store mm -hmm. because uh, it's my store is not just for shopping. It's like millions of people have come to get education. Like my blog section is one, one of the most visited sections of my site so there's a lot of information and actually like i can link the i can i, I can link the uh, uh I, I can put the link for you mm -hmm. if for mm -hmm. your your listeners if they want i wrote a book called 365 ways to reduce pms and wow. period pain naturally and so the year is about to start so you can do one a day that's all natural things and so this it's a it's a PDF that I can give give your viewers for free. Oh, that is also on my site. You can go and get it on my site. And so it's ways to live healthier if you're going through menopause or if you're 12 and have your first period. They're all natural ways. There's a lot of things we can do. So really, my site is a whole experience. It's not just shopping. That's awesome. So um, uh, one quick question: Do you also ship uh, or? 
are your customers in Canada as well as in US? Because you mentioned Las Vegas. Oh, is that because you're doing you're going the wholesale route? You want to move, uh, you want to do a booth in Las Vegas, or is it because your customers are distributed in Canada and the US? Um, Vegas is known has the biggest uh, convention halls in the world, so that's what that's why the the conventions are held there. Uh, mm-hmm. But people shop from all over the world there. Like for example, I, I have been to these shows before just as a visitor, and like when I worked in fashion, and uh, I would see like Montreal brands doing their shopping there. So if you're if you own a retail store or a retail chain. Uh, it's where you would like it's this is where they go to do like their their buying for the year they go to these Vegas shows just because like some of the conventions hall like the Mandalay Bay it's literally the room is like a kilometer long like it's like a almost a mile long in length so it's it's just it's just because it has the biggest biggest uh, halls so there is a smaller version of that here in Montreal every year that if I let's say I don't have the budget, maybe I will do that one and get my foot into the wholesale. But that's why Vegas. But I do have customers in the states, but my most of my customers they're in Canada in cities where they're more fashion forward. So like Montreal, I have uh, Vancouver, okay. um, some Halifax. So in there, there are a lot of my the women they come from cities that are like more fashionable. Amazing. So um, you you have written a book. You have an amazing blog site, uh, and you are actually running a reasonably, fa- you know, a profitable fashion brand. How do you have the time to do it all? Like, you know, uh, what does your day look like? Uh, you know, do you start with the emails and then move on to designing and then a little bit of customer feedback and then you know going back to a long term vision? How does your how do you structure your day? Um, I, I try to fit in exercise every single day, some, some kind of exercise every single day. And my husband works like in kind of nine to five. So with traffic is like seven to five or whatever from the time he leaves. So, uh, I get up at the same time and most of my days I spend in front of the computer. So either creating content or answering questions or, uh, and then when he comes home, it's like my cue to like start cl- thinking about closing it off. And then, and then when I do pop-ups, it's different because it's, I'm like in front of the the customer. So I'll be like preparing for that. And then I'll be away from home. Um, and then at night when I sit and watch my favorite series, like everyone else, this is where I do social media on my phone. Wow. And so sitting on the couch, I mean, mm-hmm. the content is already done, but sitting on the couch with the phone. So this is where I'll engage, I'll post stories, mm-hmm. I'll you know, uh, you don't need to be uncomfortable sitting at a, at a desk. You can be like lounge and you, you could get a lot of work done while, you know, uh, your favorite Netflix show is on and just on the phone. So this is why I do things that are more like easy on the brain. That's great. So uh, yeah. we're almost towards the end. Uh, just let us know what your advice for uh, upcoming women entrepreneurs, where should they start, where they need to head and how do they go about launching a fashion brand especially a fashion brand since you are from a fashion industry yeah the number one advice i'm going to get close to say this the number one advice please make a business plan that's the number one thing so if you're going to construct a house like your dream house on a lot that's empty would you do it without a plan would you would you make a, a house without a plan and just say, let's just dig and we'll see what happens. So a business plan, and especially like a business plan, it has your competitors, it has your structure, as your strategy, as your three three year financial plan. How much is it going to cost? How much are you going to sell? And where the sales going to come from? You have to do this. You can't just like jump into something and say, uh, I mean, you could start a business with a thousand dollars, but you need a plan. You can't just take your thousand dollars. Say I'll I'll figure it out, out as as I go. Make a business plan. There's a lot of templates out there. If not, pay someone to look at it for you. Someone from a, a business school, whatever. Take a business class. Take the time. You can't have it overnight. Like it took me two years from the sketch to the time my garment was in my store for sale. Two years, and I knew the business. So you know, please turn off anything from TikTok that has these overnight success. I wake up to a million dollar orders. 
you have to turn that off. It's the equivalent of, you know, I want to, uh, I want to lose a hundred pounds. And then people are saying, I, I eat all the time and I lose the weight and I, I just take it. It's, there's no magic. It's like winning the lottery. It doesn't exist. Make a plan and work on your plan and put deadlines and then put tasks every day that you're going to do. And today I need to get, you know, a new customer. I need to get my website site design or whatever it is. Um, you you can't you can't go into it without a plan. If someone asks you what's your customer acquisition cost and what's uh, what's your or like you 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 need to know your numbers. It's really important. So please, if anyone's listening, make a plan before you start. Yeah. So don't dive in with on a blueprint. So this has been great, Sandra. Thank you for sharing all this. Thank you so much. Vision with us. So guys, if you want to look up uh, Justin Haynes, just go head on to her website and you can probably take a look at the best uh, period wear, period proof active wear, which is, you know, it comes in fabulous design. So do take a, do Take a look at her website. It's wonderful. And um, have so great much. 2024. And uh, hopefully your brand grows by leaps and bounds. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. It was great having you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>